All right, so this is the story of the worst job I ever had. And um, what made it the worst job that I ever had involves feces eating, urine drinking, people going to jail, people getting fired, uh, a company going out of business, a new one uh, taking over, uh, and uh, many counts of backstabbing and other office politics bullcraft that I was just totally not prepared for. Uh, prepared for. So um, how does it all make sense? Well, in Wyoming County, Pennsylvania, there was a residential home care provider for people with mental disabilities, such as mental retardation or intellectual disabilities, as they should be called. Um, people who are schizophrenics, uh, people who are both. They have uh, residential settings, houses that an organization rents and staffs with the employees to take care of these people, and they don't have to be in some kind of uh, you know hospital or something. It's just residential home care, and so. Uh, I applied for ARC, uh, Association of Retarded Citizens. Nobody calls it the R word anymore. It's, it's a faux pas word. So uh, it was just ARC or the ARC or ARC. And uh, I applied for the ARC of Wyoming County to be a caretaker there. And I should have known what was going wrong from the beginning is I had no experience in the field. And at the first interview, uh, or there was only the one interview, they hired me as a supervisor and said, come in Monday and train. So I went home, enjoyed my weekend, and, and came back and uh, you know started training to be a supervisor of one of the houses. And it just struck me as odd that I'd never worked in the field before and I was gonna run a house. So um, I find out within like two weeks that you know I'm gonna be working about 56 hours a week. Uh, they told me it was a 40 hour a week position and that was bull. Um, the person that told me that, well, I'll get to that in a second. The boss, the woman that hired me, um, got fired by like my third week there and was done. And nobody would tell me why. And her name was Suzanne Sheridan. I can't 100% remember. Uh, then after four or five weeks there, uh, her replacement was like her number two in command. I think her name was Serena Helfrich or something like that. Helfrich, I don't know she got fired too. So I started asking questions like, what, what happened? And finally people said, look, you didn't hear this from me, but a couple months before you started working here, some people who were mad about some about not liking their jobs here or whatever, uh, you know, fed some of the clients. These are people with mental disabilities, uh, lower IQ, some of them have hearing or visual problems and they, they just don't have all their senses about them. And they fed them feces and urine. And uh, it was two women who did it. They were found guilty, convicted. Uh, names were, it was two girls named Jill. Jill Hillard and Jill Holstein, something like that. Um, they went to jail uh, for what they did um, it was for like a month each, which I don't know. How do you decide what, how to sentence somebody for feeding a, a mentally retarded person feces? Uh, how, what's a fair sentence for that? I don't know, apparently a month to a year. Uh, so. They uh, both were found guilty and arrested, but they had worked for months after they committed their offense uh, in the same house. And the reason why is because the person who eventually, you know, fessed up to what they did, you know, waited a while to do so. And then eventually her, her conscience ate at her and she, she admitted what she did, um, but they never reported it uh, officially through the different channels that you have to when something like that happens. So they were able to keep their jobs. There was no official reason to fire them since they couldn't report what they were gonna fire them for. So it was like this horrible catch-22 and the woman who was responsible for that, the one that hired me, got fired. And I think that she knew she was gonna get fired eventually, it was only a matter of time, when she hired me. I think she knew it because she hired me at a higher rate of pay than anybody else that worked there, which I found out after a couple months of working there. Um, basically, I think it was a final screw you to all these people who had worked there. Some of them worked there for like 12 or 13 years. And uh, it took them like five or six years to become a supervisor and they were making less than I was making. And I'd been there forever. And so they took it, I think some of them took it personally against me. And I don't know if they thought that I knew the woman that hired me or, if, you know, I don't know what their, why they hated me for it. I, I, they offered me money, I took it. I didn't say, no, that's too much, pay me less. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, people started jockeying to get one of the good positions after the new company was gonna come in and take over. So stories started flying about who was crappy at their job and who was inept and you know, I was being paid too much money so they of course wanted to try to knock me down. So um, 
you know, this really catty atmosphere developed that being as I knew I only had a couple more months there and then I was going to get the hell out of there. It was just hard to keep up with, you know, how offended should I really be? I was going to walk out the door, you know, after nine months anyway. Eventually, after six months, I had enough and I quit, but not without some fashionable uh, way of doing it. I was I worked an 80-hour week at one point. I did like 60 hours at my house and 16 hours at somebody else's and a handful someplace else. And this girl needed me to work 16 hours at her house every week because she was understaffed. And... Uh, one time she wrote me up and it was this week where I worked 80 hours that's not a pay period that's not two weeks it's one week a 40 hour week I did an extra 40 on top of that and she wrote me up for something stupid like I left some dishes in the sink and I didn't wash them before my my shift was over and I was like whatever and I just told my boss laughed it off and said I, I couldn't believe that they it was two of them somebody else wrote me up for something else that I'd you know given them a few hours of my time as well and I said, well, I'm, ne I'm never going to work at either of these houses again. And my boss said, I don't blame you. This is stupid. I, they're trying to throw you under the bus here. So it was just like this laughable attempt to try to bring me down. Everybody saw through it immediately. We just ripped the papers up and threw them in the garbage, you know. And uh, But I told him, I said, well, it's, I'm still insulted. I'm never going to work for either of those people again. So I had myself relegated to one house. I worked the night shift. I got out of all the office politics, and a month later I quit, and people freaked out because they didn't know what they were going to do without me, and they tried to retain me pretty hard, but I was already done. Um, horrible, awful people. I think the highlight of it all was uh, at one point they had a benefit dinner for themselves after they already knew that they were all going to lose their jobs and have to go to work for another company, which meant, I mean, they stayed in place. They stayed in the same house, the same clients, same staff. Uh, a couple of people got fired when the, the old company shut down and didn't get rehired by the new company because they didn't make the cut. Uh, but, you know, we had this going out of business dinner for ARC of Wyoming County and uh, the board of directors were there and they always thought they were so important. They were just a bunch of dumb hicks and that ran this thing into the ground in flames with a huge controversy because they weren't paying a good rate and they weren't treating people well and they got what they paid for you know i um, not saying that that excuses those two women for what they did it certainly doesn't but you know basically these people mismanaged the place they they didn't hire people who would fess up and just admit what happened right off the bat i mean i'm convinced the reason that place went under is because they waited months to fess up to what happened instead of just doing it right off the bat which showed that they weren't fit to run anything so the i skipped past the board of directors when i received some bullshit award uh, you know, like a thank you for working here award. And I didn't even shake any of their hands or look at them or take a photo op with them. And I kind of messed around and made it a big joke and everybody laughed and they all looked at me enraged, uh, you know, but they had no power at that point because the new company took over and didn't have a board of directors. So those people all got to fuck off. <laughs> and uh, so I'm bitter if you couldn't tell about that job. But yeah, even after a couple of years, I'm still pretty pissed off about some of the stuff that happened there. But I, just, I could laugh about it now because I, I work someplace else and, you know, it's it's totally better than that whole situation. So long story short, I, I had a one-year plan. I was going to work there for a year and then move to Texas. Six months later, I'd done so much overtime. I moved. I had all the money that I needed to set up in a new city. And now I'm here and I'm having a blast. So... That was the worst job I ever had. It had a happy ending for me. It had a really sad ending for some other people. Um, you know, it's very unfortunate that people got abused, and I don't want to make a joke out of any of that. Um, but uh, what a horrible, awful time. One of those things where, you know, I'll never forget that job. Working with disabled people taught me how much I could really do as a person and how big I really was. And uh, I'm always going to treasure that experience of it. But the rest of it was just total BS. So anyway, sorry to anybody that still works there. There were a couple of you that were cool. Uh, most of you sucked and probably still do. But anyway, what's your worst job? Feel free to comment below and tell me all about it. Thank you for listening.